believers. So since these things are affecting us as believers, we must give God the opportunity to be God. And what we have done is, in a lot of instances, we have taken over the lordship of our life. All right. And we have decided that we're going to do it our way. And the danger in us doing it our way is that we can no longer watch God do it. All right. We get so caught up in the world system and world stuff, we forget about the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. We forget about the spiritual realm, but we are also citizens, like we are citizens in the natural realm. We forget about that. And because we forget about that, we don't reap the full benefits of what citizenship in the spiritual looks like. Because we can't watch God do it when we got scales on our eyes and our ears are stopped up. All right. I was thinking on this past week of how I could be a better man, right. how I could be a better father, how I could be a better husband, a better pastor, a better preacher, a better teacher, a, a, a better friend, a better uncle, a better grandfather. I was just thinking about how I could be better. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that I can come up with is, is that I done done all I know to do. Well, Now I have to allow God the opportunity to refine and burn off some of the dross and smooth over some of the rough edges. I have to learn how to be patient enough and let patience have its perfect work to sit back and watch God do it. All right. John 4th chapter of the King James Version says, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. All right. So if we must worship him in spirit, it must mean that we can't worship him naturally. All right. We can give him praise naturally. Mm -hmm. And we can stand up and we can have a form of godliness. But to worship him. Come on now. To truly worship him Say and that. understand what's on the other side, we must worship him in spirit. And in truth. Well, which means that we have no longer the time for turning the truth of God into a lie to fit into our little stuff. Mm. To fit into our little, little pocket of mess say that we got going that, that. Those that worship him must listen, must worship him in spirit mm -hmm. and in truth. All right. But we are caught off guard by the overwhelming media response. That's playing on our feet. As leaders, I must remind you that being transparent and accepting the fact that this has affected us all in different ways. Well, natural fear has come upon leaders. Men of God have been naturally afraid and are naturally afraid of what's coming next with the coronavirus. Well, okay, so we're going to address that. Since that's the prevailing thought in the land, we're going to address that. What can we do? Well, we can look at coronavirus as a microchasm of society and it's showing us exactly how sin is running rampant in the earth. Go ahead. What are we doing about sin? All our focus is still on the coronavirus. But what are we doing about sin that is still running rampant in the land? Mm. So the transparency of leaders must mean that leaders who are no longer able to go in and function like they are accustomed to functioning. The ladies can't wear their big satellite hats to church. The preachers can't put on their they $400, $500, $600, $700 dollar robes. Well. $800 suits, $500 shoes. They, they can't do the things that they are accustomed to doing because now they are practicing social distancing. Some are and some aren't because they are following the head and the head said he wasn't going to do certain things. But because we're wrapped up in our humanness, yeah. we react as natural people and we have natural feelings and we make a decision based on the knowledge that we've been given. Well, okay, so let's do that. So we know that the, the gift of God is eternal life, but the wages of sin is death. We know that we've been given that fact. But what? information have we been given about the virus? Where it come from? We know it come from China. What is it? We know it's an upper respiratory 
infection. Well, okay, we've had upper respiratory infections before. Why are people panicking and running in fear as if God does not know what's going on? Well, huh. Because they are used to being on the other side of their understanding and forgetting that they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. How can you watch God when your eyes are shut in fear? Come on now. So today I just want to offer us a reminder of hope as we watch God do certain things. In 2 Chronicles, God is having a conversation with young King Solomon. And King Solomon had, had finished building the temple. And it was a stationary temple. It was a temple that was made with hands. It was exquisitely decorated with gold and all of the trimmings because, you know, Solomon was a wise man and he was one of the richest men that ever existed. So he had access. Y'all remember that word. He had access. All right. So Solomon decided that he was going to pray. Mm -hmm. He was going to pray a sincere prayer to God and ask, for God's blessing upon his efforts. Go ahead. Solomon's prayer was not a prayer of dedication. It was a prayer asking God to bless his efforts. Mm -hmm. It was a prayer that dealt with the nation of Israel eventually falling into sin. Because Solomon knew something because he lived with the people. He had access. Mm -hmm. His prayer was an advanced prayer for their deliverance from sin and the curse of sin. Well, because he understood that the gift of God was eternal life, but the wages of sin was death. Mm -hmm. This is why King Solomon was so wise and considered to be so wise. He knew that Israel would eventually sin. Well, He knew that. Now, do you think that God didn't know that man would sin? Well, he knew that. That's why he had a plan in place. Mm -hmm. Sin has been around since the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so since sin has been around from the beginning, so has God's grace and favor okay. been around right. since the beginning. But when you're on the other side of sin, you can't see it. You can't watch God do it because you're caught up in what your eyes see. See, church, sin is still a factor in the world today. It diminishes our ability to watch God perform. And it, it diminishes our ability to carry out God's directives and his plan. It still seeks to destroy our testimony and our influence. It doesn't matter what it looks like, sounds like, or feels like. It only matters what it is. See, because a lot of different people believe a lot of different stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be some disappointed people on judgment day. Well, some, people are, some people are real. Some pastors are going to be disappointed. Mm. And some of their congregation is going to be disappointed. Well, That's another well. place, another time. But I'm aware that the virus is alive and well. well. But I'm also aware that sin is alive and well. Mm -hmm. I'm fighting both. I'm dealing with both. Yeah. So I have to find a balance because the, the fight that I'm fighting is both on that side and the other side. Go ahead. Each battle calls for the appropriate battle tools and plan of action Go to ahead. get maximum results for whichever side you find yourself on. Go ahead. See, the enemy is both seen and unseen. All right. Remember that. The enemy is both seen and unseen. We don't see sin. We only see the effects Go ahead. of sin. Mm -hmm. That's right. We don't see the virus. We only see the effects Go ahead. of the virus. So as Solomon prayed, knowing that eventually Israel was going to sin, he was wise enough and settled enough in his relationship to God to know that if he waited long enough, well, if he watched for God 
God was not only going to show up and show out, but he was going to answer his, his prayer. Mm -hmm. So now, in the midst of his waiting, I believe that Solomon practiced good hygiene. Well, Because see, you couldn't get in to the temple without first going by the lava basin. Well, mm -hmm. And at the lava basins that were outside of the door before you got into it, and while you were in the outer court, meant that you had to come in and you had to wash your hands. Mm -hmm. Hand washing has been a part of our relationship with God from the beginning. Good. When we practice good hygiene, we wash our hands. Well. Mama and them, grandmama and them, auntie and them, uncle and them, daddy and them, sister and them, cousin and them have always told us, wash your hands. hands. Right. Why you in my pots, you ain't wash your hands. Mm -hmm. Why you in the refrigerator, you ain't wash your hands. Right. Keep your hand out your face even after you've washed your hands. Mm -hmm. So if we had been practicing this, mm -hmm. and if this was in us, we'd be doing it. Mm -hmm. But see, we have gotten so lax. Go ahead. We've gotten so relaxed. Mm -hmm. We've gotten so comfortable, we have forgotten to do basic things. How is it possible for an individual to cough and not cover his mouth. Yeah. Happens all the time. How is it possible for an individual to spread a virus because they are insensitive mm -hmm. to the people that they have access to mm -hmm. and who could potentially be harmed from them and their choice that they make? Well, God said to Solomon, I have heard thy prayer. And have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. Go ahead. If I shut up heaven that there be no more rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. Well, mm, 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 mm. say it. Or if I send pestilence among my people. Go ahead. If my people who are called by my name, mm -hmm. shall humble themselves and pray mm -hmm. and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will there I hear from heaven right. and will forgive their sins. Mm -hmm. It's still all about sin. That's right. Mm -hmm. Even the pestilence was about sin. Mm -hmm. It was all still to turn God's people from their bad choices Back to him. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins. Listen, church. And will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto thy prayer that is made in this place. Mm -hmm. God guaranteed the nation of Israel that they would always have a chance to make things right. Well, God guarantees to them that he would always. Listen to their prayer. Mm -hmm. But he places conditions on those facts and promises. Go ahead. Go ahead. There it is. I want to focus your attention on a few things today that I hope will help us. God does send storms and allows other storms in our life. Mm -hmm. Come on now. God does send storms yes, and allows other storms in our life. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Life is full of trouble. Yes. Medical storms. Sickness, disease, accidents, relationship storms, divorce, abuse, emotional storms, depression, loneliness, financial storms, mm -hmm. unemployment, bankruptcy, natural storms, tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, and so many other things. So we understand what storms are. Mm -hmm. Go ahead now. We understand what storms look like. Mm -hmm. We have been in the midst of a storm for a long time. I've got 
bad news for you. Come on now. Mm -hmm. What do you want first? Mm -hmm. They obviously say, just like we would say, give us the good news. <laughs> All right. And give it to us first. <laughs> so Paul said, here's the good news, church. There's going to be a storm. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a terrible storm. Mm -hmm. In fact, the storm is going to get worse. Come on now. Is that not the same thing that the media is oh, saying to us? Yes. But this storm that we find ourselves in well, is going to get worse. Come on now. Did God send the storm or did he allow it? Is that really a difference? That's right. Does it really even matter? That's right. When you are standing up to your ears in the storm and about to drown in the water, well, does it matter if God sent it or if he allowed it okay. or that you're in it? There you go. Well, Remember, church, some storms he allows because they are a direct result of sin. Come on now. Right. Here's the truth that must be remembered. God does not cause sin. Mm -hmm. So he does not cause the storms That's that right. we are in That's right. all the time. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Come on now. If you choose to go out and have several drinks, with you and your wife, and then get into your car that you have decided that you're gonna drive because she can't drive because she can have too many drinks too. And you run into a tree, and your wife is near the kid, mm. and you lay in the ER, torn up and broken up with your wife on life support. Did God send that storm or did He just allow it? He allowed it. You caused it. He allowed you to make your own decision. That's right. That's it. But you caused the storm. Right. There you go. Right. See, sometimes our decisions allow us to be in a storm yes. that we don't have to be in. Yes. Well, all by our choice. Yes. That's right. And other times, God has to step into the situation mm -hmm. and cause a storm to come into our life. Uh -huh. He allows it to come into our life so he can use it for our good. Yes. Come on, man. Come on, come on. Yes, it does. Whether he allows it or whether we get into it, they both have the same result. Mm -hmm. Well, trying to get us back to where we need to be. Well, 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 so really, in one sense, it, it doesn't matter because God is going to use it for our good. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Because we are still listening and learning from the other side. Well, I'm trying to get to the other, other side. side. Come on. <laughs> That's right. But, but we don't want to watch God do it. God allows those storms mm -hmm. and sends those storms sometimes because he knows and realizes that that is the only the way only that he way. can get the wayward come to come back. That's right. Well, well, well. Now, now, now. Paul went to jail on several occasions. Uh -huh. So some would consider that that was a storm in his life. But it was allowed. Right. Well, mm -hmm. It was allowed so that God could still get the glory. Yes. Well, yes. Sometimes jail is not a bad place to be for somebody that's on their way to hell. Mm -hmm. well, Come on, Come on. Think of it like this. God in his wisdom who knows everything that we don't know yet. Come on, that's right. Come on. Huh? That's it. He knows that if we continue on our path without some sort of intervention, Come on. the outcome might not be, uh, give us good results. Come on, now. That's right. If there were no storms in our life, Come on, now. we would go deeper and deeper. And deeper, uh, say that. and deeper, oh, yeah. say that. and deeper, well, and get further, and well, further, mm -hmm. and further well, away well, from God, say that. and deeper into the grasp and the clutches of sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. If you could say that sin was okay, then you could sin more. Well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So some people have made a choice to say sin. It's okay. Go ahead. So they sin more. Uh -huh. But we know that the wages of sin on, is death. death. We know it, but we sin anyway. Go ahead. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. All right. When the storm doesn't get your attention, mm -hmm. 
and doesn't cause you to realize that there's a problem, well, there's a real problem. Yes, well, yes. well, the storm should ask us to say, why? Why is this happening? Why is this going on? Why we should question some things. Well, mm -hmm. why now? Why not now? Sin has taken believers over to the realm of non-believers mm -hmm. and they are intermingled and intermixed so, so closely together like we didn't have. You can't tell the difference. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. but we're trying to get the believer to understand that God is still on the throne. Oh, yes. But let's watch him do it. Mm -hmm. The storms should make us aware of where we are. Mm -hmm. well. The storms should make us aware of where we need to be. So if this virus is a storm, if sin is a storm, maybe, just maybe, we should reframe our thinking to see it like this. What is God trying to get us to see? That the storms are designed to cause us to repent and come back under the umbrella of protection. Right. Come on now, come on now. That's right. See, church, faith is natural. Mm -hmm. Faith in self is natural. Well. Faith in God is unnatural. Yes, well. See, it's against our natural understanding. Mm -hmm. Our natural tendency on this side is to believe what we can see. Come That's on right. now. That's right. What we can prove. That's right. What we can touch, mm -hmm. what we can feel. Mm -hmm. That's our natural tendency right. on that side. Go ahead. If we are left to ourselves and our own thinking, we would begin to put more trust in ourselves and in our goodness and in our own abilities, well. which we have done before. I remember when Moses went up on the mount. Come on, Edwin. To get the rules of order. Mm -hmm. To get the, the laws and the mandate for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. The people didn't want to watch God do it. Mm -hmm. They got impatient. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to wait on God. Mm -hmm. They wanted the God. So the, the, the idiots who had been living amongst the other idiots <laughs> in on. Egypt all this time on, wanted Edwin. to use some of the idiotic Tendencies and thoughts to fashion a God and make a God a graven image mm -hmm. while Moses was up trying to get something to help him live. Uh -huh. Go ahead, go ahead. Because they couldn't wait on God to do it. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't want to watch God do it. See, sometimes our choices mm -hmm. put us in a situation and a position that we don't have to be in. That's right. Supernatural comes from the Latin word supernatural, mm -hmm. meaning beyond nature. beyond nature. The adjective form of supernatural describes anything that is caused by something that is unexplained or can't be explained by the laws mm -hmm. of nature. Come on now. Relating to or being above or beyond what is natural. That's right. Unexplainable. By natural law or phenomena. Abnormal understanding pertaining to the characteristics or the attributes of a God or deity. Yeah. So it takes something supernatural sometimes for us to get our minds right. Well, well. It takes something spiritual for us to put our faith in mm -hmm. that we cannot see. All right. We can't touch. And we can't prove it with our mind. That's what faith is. We can't see faith. Mm -hmm. We can only see the results of faith. Say that. When the storms of life come, God still wants us to put our trust in him. Mm -hmm. He still wants us to see his power. Say that. He still wants us to see his love, to see his wisdom. Mm -hmm. But in order for us to do that, we must not put our trust in science huh. or in someone else Go ahead. or in ourselves in theories we have to know that we know that we know that we know even if we don't know why we know 
right. We still got to know. That's right. That's right. Inside of each of us that are believers who have never seen God is a knowing. There's a knowing. How do you know? Because I know. All right. How do you know? I don't know. I just know. <laughs> yeah. People will challenge you on what you know. Well. They will argue with you about what you know. Are you not worried about the virus? Of course I'm concerned about the virus. Well. But I'm not worried. Yeah. About the virus. That's right. I've lived with viruses around me all my life. Come on. Well. Sin is a virus. Well. Mm -hmm. Hatred and malice and anger is a virus. Yeah. All right. I've lived around viruses. Come on now. Lying is a virus. Right. Well. Listen, would you rather catch lying or catch or catch the corona? Well. <laughs> Church, weak 
weak-minded, disobedient men have already come to the conclusion that they can't do things without God. They have abandoned hope. Mm -hmm. They have abandoned the hope in themselves, in their understanding, and in their truth. Good. That's why they lean to their own understanding, uh -huh. because they've abandoned hope. But God was asserting the fact that he is more powerful than the sick. He's more powerful than the winds howling and the lightning crashing all around you. He's more powerful than the storm that we might be in. He's more powerful than the elements of nature. Go ahead. And he would keep us safe and not allow the boats that we are in during the storm to be destroyed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. God says the same thing to us. I am more powerful than the storm. Well, he is. Whether the storm is a self-created storm mm -hmm. or a storm that God sent or God allowed, God is still greater than that storm. Mm -hmm. He is able to do with that storm whatever he so desires while the storm is raging in our lives. Well, well. Because he's still God. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget that during this time of uncertainty that God is still God. Yes, Let us keep our trust on him and keep our eyes on him and keep our eyes on his divine abilities and let's just watch him do it. That's right. What? What else we going to do? We at home all day. What else we going to do? All right. Uh, yes. Okay. Maybe I'm going to deviate for a second. Maybe, just maybe, God wanted his believers to practice more praying. Well. You got time to pray now. Mm -hmm. or, or do you have more time to get on the internet? Mm -hmm. Maybe, just maybe God wanted some more quality time. Look, well, you ain't got nothing but time if you're at the house. If you're at the house, if you ain't at the house, you still don't have no more time than you had before. But for those who find themselves at the house, maybe, just maybe, God is saying, okay, now I got your attention. I've slowed it down a little bit around you because the world is zoom, 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 zoom. I've slowed it down to a snail's pace all around you. Mm -hmm. Can I get can I get an hour today? Listen, can I get 20 minutes today? Can, listen, can I get 10 minutes today? Well, 10 minutes with God in sincere praise is just as good as an hour with God with half hearted hearted praise. Well, mm -hmm. praise with no commitment, no substance. Mm -hmm. All right. You see, because God still is a, a, a discerner of the hearts of men. Mm -hmm. He's searching our hearts. Mm -hmm. And he's looking for certain things in us. Mm -hmm. Maybe, just maybe, God is trying to get some people's attention and trying to get some people to wake up. But people are too focused on the virus to see that. Listen, before the death angel came, after Pharaoh had issued the edict that all of the firstborn would die from his own mouth. Mm -hmm. After these things had transpired and the death angel was coming and the blood was smeared over the doorpost, mm -hmm. do you think some people wanted to look out and see what was going on? Well, yeah. mm -hmm. do, you, do you think the curiosity, just some people's curiosity, just wanted to see? What was going on? They didn't want to watch God do it and wait for God to do it. They wanted to see. Mm -hmm. well, okay, so how are we going to see God fix the virus? <laughs> the history is repeating that shit. How, how can we see God fix the virus? How you know he's going to fix it? Because he said he will. Well, how you know? Because I know. How you know God is in you? I don't know. I know. Wait a minute, man. You're contradicting yourself. No. I don't know how I know. I just know. Well, man, I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. As a child of God, we have the same guarantees that God will provide to us. Yes. God is more powerful than any storm. Mm -hmm. When we sin, we still have a chance to get it right. That's right. Nevertheless, this guarantee still comes with conditions. That's right. Well, that's right. The conditions of God's help to get us out of the mess 
that we in, the mess that we've allowed Lucifer to talk us into, the mess that we've allowed our choices and our mind to get us in, is plainly stated in scriptures. The steps to our redemption are very, very simple. We are to stop thinking too highly of ourselves. We are to renew our minds. We are to communicate with God. We are to repent. Well. Then and only then will God begin to do some things on our behalf and come to our rescue. Yeah. We need to stop fooling ourselves. We can't do nothing to save ourselves. That's right. We can't do nothing to stop from sinning without divine intervention. Uh -huh. Well. Without divine intervention, we're going to continue to sin. Because sin is what some people like to do. How do you know that sin is what some people like to do? Because they still sin it. <laughs> That's how I know. That's right. We must face the fact that when we are in sin, we are down on the floor. We are down in the muck and the mire. Mm -hmm. We are down in the pit. The reality of our present situation is that we cannot get ourselves out of the muck that we in. We have come to the conclusion like the ignorant man is there's no hope for us. But there is hope for us. The good news is that there's hope in repentance from our sins. There's an assurance and deliverance from our sins. The hope is in the glorious spiritual transformation that lies ahead. But we have to meet some conditions. Well, God is a God that keeps his word. Go ahead. God says his word will not return to him void. Well. It will accomplish what it is sent for to do on our behalf. He didn't give it a time frame. He didn't say it will be today. He didn't say it will be tomorrow. He said that it would not return to him void. Double promise would not return void and will accomplish yes. what it is sent forth to do. Well, sometimes we gotta wait on it. Mm -hmm. right. Sometimes we gotta wait and watch God do it. Mm -hmm. He said that He would do it. Mm -hmm. I believe mm -hmm. He would do it. Amen. He said that He can do it. Well, I believe that He can do it. Go ahead. Now. He said that he could abundantly do more than we could ever ask or think. Come on now. I believe that he can abundantly do more than I could ever ask oh. or think. Yes. Yeah. How you know? I don't know. But I know. But I know. <laughs> <laughs> the hope is in the promise that God is for us, for who he said he is, for us. Because when God is for us, who can stand against us? Right. Huh? All right. The hope is the fact that we know that Jesus has paid the price to set us free. Uh -huh. And whom the Son sets free uh -huh. is free indeed. All right, man. So listen, if I'm free, if God is going to deliver me from the storm that I'm in, uh -huh. why am I fearful and worried about the virus? Well, I'm not. But I'm not an idiot either. Listen. If you hang around with enough people that got the virus without protection, you can be infected with the virus. Well, mm -hmm. right. If you hang around sinners long enough mm -hmm. without protection, Go ahead. sooner or later you're going to get infected with the sin virus. Well, mm -hmm. Ain't no two ways around it. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Listen, we like to cozy up, rub up, talk nice to sin. Because sin will make us feel good for a minute. Uh -huh. But sin, when it is conceived, mm. brings forth death. Yes, Come on now. Yes, it does. Huh? That's right. In the end of all of this, and it could be a natural death. Mm -hmm. It could be a spiritual death. Yes. You could kill your testimony. Uh -huh. You can murder your influence. Uh -huh. You can murder your ministry. Yes. 
dead is dead. That's right. Mm. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Free now. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Once the healing hands of God touch our hearts and our mind, He changes us mm -hmm. into new creations. He deals with all of the sin that may remain that's hidden. He deals with those habits. He deals with those demons, mm -hmm. those quirks, those addictions that still continue to keep us outside of his will mm -hmm. and not let go of us mm -hmm. because we don't want to let go of them because we don't want to watch God do it because we have got a custom to having them around. What's my life going to look like if I get rid of all these demons and get my house mm -hmm. swept and garnished? And I fail to keep it clean. Seven more gonna come back, and they're gonna bring some friends, and you're gonna find yourself in a worse condition than you were before. Yeah. Well, yeah. well. That's when you're standing in ignorance and leaning to your own understanding on the other side. Uh -huh. We gotta watch God do it. We act a certain way in church and we act a different way at home. It ought not be so. Come on now. We allow ourselves to act out our beliefs that may include God and may not include God. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to tell you, God has unlimited resources. Oh, yeah. God knows what you do when you don't know what you do. Oh. All right. <laughs> God knows what you do when you're at home in the booth in the back in the corner in the dark. He knows what you're looking at online. He knows who you're texting, tweeting, grabbing, and scoping. He knows. He knows. He declares that his grace and his power is sufficient to meet our needs. Mm -hmm. Even in times like we're in right now, God's grace is sufficient. We know that in times past, God has bought us out of hard places, church. He's bought us out of bad situations before. He's kept us from terrible circumstances and situations. He's, he's kept death at bay from some of us. Yeah. He may have allowed the body to go through some, some things in the body, but he staved off death. Would you rather be living or living? I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Hmm. We know that he promises to do what he said that he promises to do. Mm -hmm. Well, So then why do we rack our brains trying to figure out what the solutions are to our problems? Why do we go through so many situations and circumstances and get so bent out of shape? I believe that the enemy gets in there somehow and on, twists mm -hmm. some things around and mm -hmm. challenges our faith because we didn't get caught off guard because we slipped in a little bit. Mm -hmm. The forefathers of the Bible had seen the miracle working of power and how he was challenging them to do something and that they would need to learn how to walk in their same power and they slipped. They messed up. Men of God, mighty men of God, afraid of, 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 a, of a woman, demon spirit of Jezebel. I'm going to kill him. 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 Here's a prophet of God, an apostle of God, a man of God, a woman of God, a preacher of God, hiding out in the cave because he worried about what somebody thought, what somebody said they was going to do. Come on now. It affects us naturally. People's words affect us naturally. Our decisions and our choices, even loving God, sometimes cause us to get in situations and circumstances that only God can get us out of. Go ahead now. Men often question themselves. Some walk in total obedience. Some walk in half obedience. Some walk in no obedience at all. But God is still filled with compassion for us all. He still wants to help us all. He still wants us to learn the lesson of what it looks like and what it means to watch him do it as we turn to him first. Mm -hmm. Seek ye first the kingdom. the kingdom of God and all his righteousness mm -hmm. and all else will be added to you. He wants us to seek him first. Well, mm -hmm. he, he didn't say go to Dr. Buzzard, mm -hmm. Reverend Buzzard, a prophetess Buzzard, Apostle Buzzard. 
I got the prayer cloth and the oil. All you got to do is call me and I can remove the spirits from your loved ones that's got you hexed and vexed and perplexed and drillexed. All you got to do is send me 999 and get some of this holy water that's been blessed from the moon rock, from the water of the great sun. Go ahead. Have a mercy. Listen to the ads on the radio. Pick up the newspapers and see these ads. Sister so-and-so will pray your loved ones back to you. Listen, if you didn't pray them away, you can't pray them back. Come on. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Go ahead, now. You, you, you know, we, 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 we do some things and we get caught up in some things and, and we say it's God. There ain't no God in Come on. God say, I ain't co sign on that. We need to learn the lesson of returning to God first. As God leads, He will make a way for us as we. Make our will in line with his will to obey him. Go ahead now. I believe, church, that we are being challenged today mm -hmm. to step out on our faith. Mm -hmm. This may look different for you than it looks for me. But whether or not it's sharing your faith, sharing your time, sharing your talents, and sharing your treasure, whatever it is that God is beckoning for us to do. Mm -hmm. However, he is beckoning for us to do it. We must do it with integrity. Mm -hmm. We must do it with obedience. Mm -hmm. We must do it with zeal and a humble heart. Mm -hmm. So the big question remains. If we have God working for us mm -hmm. and not against us, how do we wait on God? How do we watch him do it? In Isaiah, waiting for God implies that the people understood that they were in trouble. Well, The people understood that they were in need. Mm -hmm. The people understood that there was an entity, a deity that they recognized that wasn't a graven image that they could put their hope and trust in. Well, Because, see, during those times, there were real wars. I'm talking about Real war. Yeah. You know, we don't understand war in the United States unless we're talking about we got the war on the virus. That makes no sense to me. Mm -hmm. Unless we're talking about we got the war on drugs. That makes no sense to me. I understand the correlation and the analogy of how they're trying to throw them together. But war meant an army marched in and started busting heads, killing up folk. Killing up dogs, cats, people, raping children, raping women, raping the animals, raping the land, setting everything on fire, taking what they want, and leaving and going somewhere. That's what war meant during the biblical times. Well, I understand the correlation of how we can see some of those things happening with the war on drugs and the war on violence. I see the correlation, but that's not a real war. I can see the danger from our enemies. I can see the temptation of men. I can see men sitting back in fear, waiting on God to act. Waiting on the Lord means looking for the Lord to intervene. Seeking his will first before human intervention is pursued. Mm -hmm. As we wait for the Lord, we should pause and we should pray before we act. Psalms 106 and 13 says, they soon forgot his works. They did not wait for his counsel. Sometimes we want to get ahead of God. Mm -hmm. The first act of waiting on God is to seek counsel in prayer before any attempt is made to do it ourselves. And then it should go without saying we should wait for God's counsel mm -hmm. and be submissive and then be open to receive it when it comes. All right. We are not telling him what he must do. You know, that's a big problem in the church and in Christianity. We like to tell God what he need to do for us mm -hmm. and how he need to do. Mm -hmm. Well, wait a minute. If we have got so big and so bold that we can tell God mm -hmm. how he need to do it, why can't we do it ourselves? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we're going to tell God how to do it. We, we recognize that we can't do it, but we we, we going to come boldly before the throne of grace. And make our prayers and supplications and petitions known for God. It don't mean to come foolishly and with disrespect. Mm -hmm. 
It still needs to come decently in order and come in praise and come in a way that can be received. God will not work for us under selfish conditions that we impose on him. Mm -hmm. So when we pray for God's counsel, we must be prepared to hear what God said to Moses at the Red Sea. Fear not. Stand firm. Mm -hmm. And behold the salvation of the Lord, mm -hmm. which he will work for you today. Mm -hmm. Fear not, church, in the midst of the storm, mm -hmm. in the midst of the Red Sea. Stand firm. Stand firm in your belief. Stand firm in your hope. Stand firm in your knowing that you know, even though you don't know why you know. Stand firm. And behold the salvation of the Lord. Which he will work for you today. The Lord will fight for you. And you have only to be still. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> he got us all still right now. All, right. all we got to do is be still. Be still. I'm closing church with this. When circumstances and situations or storms arise in your life and you feel something must be done, wait for the Lord. Keep wait. Wait. waiting for you. Here's the formula. Real simple. Pray. Seek his faith, seek his counsel, submit to his wisdom. If he says be still, be still. If you say leave it in his hands, leave it in his hands. Trust God's supernatural involvement in the situation and get out of the way. That's it. All right. I don't mean continue to be lazy in your prayer time. Mm -hmm. I mean if you know that you ain't been praying and you need to pray more, uh, duh. Pray more. Pray more. <laughs> when we think that we are the most prepared, mm. when we think that we are the most capable, when we think that we are primed for battle, God may say, sit down. Well, Stay home. Mm -hmm. Be quiet. And watch me act. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we just so rare to go. We just so rare to go. We just ready. We the country. We ready to go. We ready to go now. Mm -hmm. And God say, "Listen, get over there. Someone sit down and grandma say, and shut up. <laughs> get over there. Sit down and be quiet. We can't hear that because we ready to go. Mm -hmm. If the Lord says, prepare, train, study, rest, remain humble, mm -hmm. then we should prepare, train." Rest, study, yeah. and wait for him to do it. Right. We have a, a spirit of expectancy, church, that we want the Lord to do what he says that he's going to do. Mm -hmm. And the Lord loves people who are committed to his will well. and his way. God's knowledge of how everything works and how we need him in our life is infinite. His strength and his <coughs> endurance is infinite, infinite. Mm. God cannot fail. What will Pastor, what's infinite? I hear it all the time. Infinite means limitless, mm -hmm. endless in time mm -hmm. or space. Well, limitless in the extent or size. Impossible to measure or calculate. Mm -hmm. That's what God's abilities are like yes, to us. Yes. That's how big our God is with his resources. Yeah, he is. has endless love for us that's infinite. His mercy towards us is limitless. Mm -hmm. His power is absolute. His grace is boundless. His goodness is unending and a continuum perfection in our lives. Mm -hmm. The magnitude of his glory is without end. He says to us in Isaiah 46, 9 and 10, I am God, there is no other. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. I am God, and there is none like me. Yes. All right. Yes. Declaring the end from the beginning, mm -hmm. and from the ancient times, things not yet done. Mm -hmm. That's some things that God still hasn't done yet. Uh -huh. Saying, 
My counsel shall stand and I will accomplish my purpose. Well, God said his purpose is going to be accomplished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be accomplished in the earth. Oh, yeah. It's going to be accomplished in you, with you, or without you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If God undertakes to work for us, he cannot fail. Mm -hmm. He will succeed in providing us with all the help and assistance that we need. Sometimes the only thing we have to do, churches, is wait on God to deliver the results. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to fast and pray. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we got to read. Sometimes we got to rest. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we got to do something. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we got to get up off of it and do something. Mm -hmm. And quit being lazy Christians. Mm -hmm. In the midst of a sinful world, we got to do our part mm -hmm. and do our part better. Am I saying that people aren't doing their part? No, that's not what I'm saying. Are you doing your part to the best of your ability? That's something for you to decide. Because God already knows. Yeah. We have to wait on God to deliver these results. God time is not an hour time. Mm -hmm. All we have to do outside of our natural protections of washing our hands and practicing social distancing is believe that God has the power to do what he said he's going to yeah. do. Yeah. And watch him do it. Yes, Amen. 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 As Paul says in Philippians, my God will supply every need of yours mm -hmm. according to his riches in glory. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this word that was brought forth today. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father God, that as we go through this storm and as we find ourselves in a time of reckoning right now, Father God, that you are still God and you are still on the throne. Mm -hmm. We recognize your abilities, Father God, both as God and your abilities in us. Father God, but we need you right now, Father God. We need you to shore up some of those fears. We need you to address some of that confusion. We need you, Father God, to show forth your power in the earth. We send forth the word of God right now to the north, the south, the east, and the west. Father, go do it. We send your word to do it. Heal the land. Oh, heal the land. Heal the inhabitants of the land, Father. Well. Remove the scales from their eyes and stop their ears. Send forth laborers into their path, Father God, to send them truth so that your divine will can be done. As Matthew 18 and 18 says, whatsoever is bound on earth and bound in heaven, and whatsoever is loose in earth and be loose in heaven. Father God, we bind this word to the hearts and minds of men that are listening. We loose the spirit of truth into the earth right now. Father, go forth and do it. Do it, Lord. Whatever it is. However it is. Whatever needs to be done, Father, reach down into minds. Thank reach you, down into hearts. Yes. You, reach down into bodies. Yes, Do spiritual yes. surgery and cut yes. away whatever needs to be cut away. Yes. Eradicate sin. Cut it out. Address it. Burn it. We curse sin at its root and we send it back to where it comes from. And Father God, reign in our lives yes, as you reign on our lives. And it shall be done to our God yes. and our Thank Father. You, Thank be you. glory, grace, and favor upon us yes. this day and forever. And they all said, amen. 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 And amen. amen. Church, I've been obedient to the Lord and I've given you what the Lord has laid on my heart to give to you. We have to learn how to wait on God. Well, we have to learn how to watch God do it. We have to give God something to work with. We get in the way. But when we get out of the way yes. and we let God do what he's going to do on this side,